Hello, and welcome back to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler. If you recall, yesterday we had a little bit of technical difficulty where the camera failed to record a bit of my scraping away of the last few layers uh, that we had put down on the substrate. So where we ended yesterday and where we're starting today, the piece is going to look quite a bit different. Um, but with that in mind, why don't we just get started? Okay, so as you can see, quite a bit has been taken off since we last saw this piece. And I'm going to immediately cover that up for now. We'll definitely get a much deeper look at uh, what I scrape back up after uh, we put down these few layers. But first off, I'm going to be taping um, off the midsection here um, to cover up the actual Miracle Man logo aspect of this piece while we kind of tone in uh, some of the uh, more background features and actually get some color um, put back into the kind of background aspects of this piece. And then we're going to do that with um, the Neocolor pastels. Now, if you recall from what I've said in previous videos, sometimes when you're using the Neo colors directly on the encaustic wax, the actual mark will kind of stain the, uh, the wax, making it very difficult to kind of get more of a wash element going on. Um, so what you don't see in frame at the moment is I actually have a little bit of um, a diluted bit of the Neo Color Pastel um, on a shallow palette with some water. Um, basically just took that uh, wax crayon, just rubbed a little bit on the base of the palette, and then put some water in it and mixed it in together so it acts more as a wash rather than putting the crayon on first and then washing the element. Because right now um, I have enough marks um, from all the scraping that I did. Uh, so that is what we want to shine through. We don't want really any other sort of gestural marks or anything. We just want to colorize sort of the uh, roughened and sort of uh, in construction sort of background to shine through. So I'm going to put up a few washes um, over this and the end result, I do want the sort of bottom base um, of this piece to definitely have more of a ground. So that will definitely have a, a darker blue tonation uh, than the top of it will. And so a couple washes um, and then I'm going to go back over with um, just a paper towel and sort of um, rub off any of that excess sort of wash element and just really let that blue sort of saturate in the crevices and marks and divots um, that have been sort of a uh, curing as we've been scraping and moving a lot of that background. Um, this is why we were doing all those tiny little layers of stuff so you can kind of see just little bits of those shining through once we're all said and done, but really that's it's a lot of light layers slightly scrubbed back away um, after they've had some time to dry. That's something that you'll get to see a little bit more in this is um, the more the Neo colors are dry, the more they're going to hold to the actual substrate. So right now I could easily just, you know, wash it all away um, with a paper towel or kind of just pat it to sort of stay in little bits. And the, the longer it dries, the more of it's going to stick as I wipe away. So that's why I'm leaving so much at the bottom right now. It will lessen in a little bit. Um, but we are really just adding a whole lot of texture right now. So yes, we're going to be feeding quite a bit of this um, blue into the background, uh, partly because we don't have much of that blue in the actual sort of logo center of the piece. And this blue is an integral part of Miracle Man's uh, costume. It is the bulk of it, to be honest, um, with the sort of red and yellow being more accent colors. So we definitely need um, this blue to be a much bigger part of the piece than just sort of the that little underlying uh, blue mark that we had underneath um, the M. So this will help really feed that in there, um, but also due to the deconstruction of how we have things, it does give it a little sort of uh, cosmic sort of outer space sort of 
vibe um, with the sort of construction and sort of breakdown of the pieces um, as we as we tune tone this uh, this blue in. So it kind of works twofold for us in definitely being part of the costume color, but also sort of um, lends to the the uh, space nature of uh, of a comic book character. So what you can see now, um, wiped everything away quite a bit. So this is what the layers look like. Um, very lightly blue on the top, but with a lot of little detail going on. I'm going to start to peel this back up so you can kind of see how defined and different that line is and how blue it is in comparison. See, there's, there's quite a bit of, even though it looks very subtle, there's quite a bit of uh, blue tonation now in that outer limb of the piece. And now that we have a full view of the piece, you can see how much um, I took away from last time. Um, all of that um, sort of melting and bleeding of the red M's to the top, all of that um, neo-pastel red for the other M that I had, I pulled most of all of that back away. There are still little hints of it here and there, um, and that is what we want for now. We're going to build some of those elements back in in a different way, um, but you can see I pulled quite a bit back. Um, and that is kind of the nature of this character, um, which we're going to get into a bit of the history of. Um, the character is one that was actually created um, by a scientist, a British scientist, um, once he discovered some aliens um, that were able to basically um, change their, change into a new body whenever they wanted. Um, so what the scientist was able to do was basically uh, clone the body of a pilot, um, uh, and that clone body ended up being more of a sort of uh, perfected, sort of super human version of the person that is stored in this um, extra dimensional pocket of space and is summoned forth by use of a, of a, of a code word. And then those bodies basically switch spaces in reality, and even the, the minds uh, switch a bit too. So very odd sort of origins of uh, basically cloning. You have the actual person, and then you have this sort of cloned perfect version of that person. So sort of duality and, uh, as, and sort of uh, and cloning and sort of uh, having, having dual elements of each other is going to be a big part of what we're doing, which is why we started off with basically two circles sort of in one another, um, was to start with sort of an element within another element. So you'll see a, sort of a lot of uh, uh, quote unquote cloning going on with how I'm making um, a lot of marks and gestures as we move forward. Um, but again, this, uh, the background being the blue in the space um, lends itself to the idea that this character's origins are extraterrestrial, outer space, stored in a pocket sort of space dimension. Um, so all of that sort of feeds into um, the history of the character. Right now in the piece, just slowly sort of marking things up a little bit, toning things in. I wanted to get the edge of that circle a little deconstructed in spots so it didn't just look as such a nice clean line all the way around. Um, we want this to feel like it's being built, being constructed. Um, final per se, but we're, we're, we're basically building this character into uh, the person in a lot of ways. So that's why a lot of sort of construction elements, a lot of building elements, um, building things up, breaking things down, um, is really central to um, the idea of this character as well as how we are building it. So now we're going to dive into um, a little bit of a transfer paper lesson. I use transfer paper a lot um, in my work. I buy black and white transfer paper uh, by the bundles because I use it so often. Um, but sometimes you might want to use um, another color 
or you might not want to go ahead and buy some, you can make it yourself. Um, and finding colored transfer paper can be tricky, and then finding the actual color that you want can be nigh impossible. So in order to make your own, you can take a piece of paper. I recommend tracing paper, um, but you could even use um, even printer paper. Uh, but the thinner it is, the better it's going to work for you. So taking tra tracing paper and then taking either a pencil or a stick of graphite, you can rub like you're seeing here um, to create just a nice black transfer paper. If you want to use color, um, I use woodless colored pencils. Um, they're um, Kohinoor colored pencils. They're woodless so that when I am rubbing it onto the paper here, I don't have any wood in my way. I'm getting a lot more coverage just with the actual colored pencil itself. And you can see I'm also holding this pretty tight to where I'm scrubbing because this is tracing paper. So it is fairly brittle. Um, so I don't want it to rip. I actually do rip it in one little spot here, but it uh, does not affect the overall scenario of what we're doing. Um, but that's why I'm holding it so tight because, trans because this is uh, tracing paper and can be a little, little brittle. But at the same time, because it is so thin, it allows for any mark that you make on it to transfer much easier. The thicker the paper is, the harder it is for your marks to show up um, clean and nice um, on the other side. So tracing paper is definitely the way to go. And then as far as what you use to make a mark, um, I've used many different things over, over, over my time. Pencils themselves don't work very well. Um, they dull very quickly. You have to put a lot of pressure down to get um, that mark to read well on the other side. Ballpoint pens seem to be where I tend to fall for the better way to go about it. Um, gives you a nice clean line, also allows you to make a nice mark so you can also see what you do for that line. Uh, my wife actually found this fantastic um, pen made by Mitsubishi um, that I've been using nonstop um, lately. It's got a very, it's a ballpoint pen that has a very fine point, um, but is softer than most because some very fine ballpoints can just tear through uh, transfer paper. This one does not. Um, so um, I'll put a link to it in the description below, along with all the other material, materials that we are using today. Um, but I highly recommend using uh, the pen you are currently seeing um, because it gives you a very, very nice fine line um, when using it. So right now I'm just putting a few more sort of construction element marks um, on the piece to sort of enforce where the boundaries of these M's um, are going to be. We originally had them there in black, um, but in the scrape down, most of that pulled away. So now I'm going to put those back in, uh, but this time with this red color instead of straight black, because we're going to want to reinforce that, that emblem um, with more color. And that is all for today. Tomorrow we're going to pick up exactly where we left off by adding in quite a few character-specific details into this piece that really kind of brings together more of the central elements um, as to what this character is. Like I said before, like the idea of clone bodies and pocket dimension sort of scenarios and, uh, and sort of constructing a hero through sort of uh, scientific endeavors. So with that in mind, I've been Tyler with Nameless Studio. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more like it. Until next time, be seeing you.